What is the effect of failure to flee? When you say failure to flee, they are simply referring to a defendant who does not flee, who does not state his reasons opposing the complaint. If he does not flee, then he is considered to have waived all the defenses that are available to him. Nevertheless, even if the defendant fails to plead, fails to find an answer, if the judge finds that the court is without jurisdiction over the subject matter of the complaint, or that there is a pending action between the same parties for the same cause, or there is res judicata, bar by prior judgment, the court nevertheless will dismiss the complaint, even if the defendant did not plead that or those defenses. That's true, under the second section, so section one. It says then, however, when it appears from the pleading or the evidence of record that the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter, that there is another action pending between the same parties for the same cause, and that the action is barred by prior judgment or by the statute of limitation, the court shall dismiss the complaint. That is, notwithstanding that the defendant did not plead, did not file his answer, raising those defenses. The second sentence of section 1 talks about the defenses that a defendant may raise. But the defendant did not raise those because he failed to plead. So, Nevertheless, the court is mandated to dismiss the complaint, even without a motion to dismiss being filed by the defendant. On the other hand, if the defendant fails to plead, all the defenses available to him are considered weak. Except that the court on its own, on its own, moto proprio. Get it to moto proprio. Moto proprio. The meaning of moto proprio is the court on its own may dismiss the complaint. But only on those grounds mentioned in the second sentence of section 1, rule 9. Did you get that? Okay. Compulsory counterclaim not pleaded, the weight and therefore barred. A cross claim that is not pleaded by a defendant is considered barred. And therefore, the defendant cannot anymore file a cross claim against his fellow defendant. I already illustrated to you what a cross claim is. Huh? It's a case between co defendants. So if A is like this,
a cruise claim is a claim by any one of them against each other. Huh? So if the defendant does not raise his cruise claim, it is considered barred. If these defendants do not plead their compulsory counterclaim against A, that counterclaim is also barred. When we say barred, you are not allowed anymore to raise it later on. Default. If you fail to file your answer within the reglamentary period, and what is the reglamentary period within which a defendant is supposed to file his answer? It is 30 days. But, but the defendant is entitled to file a motion for extension of time to file answer. And he will be given additional 30 days. Beyond that, no more further extension shall be allowed. Now then, if you want your 30 day period to be extended, you should file a motion for extension of time to file answer. And that motion for extension should be filed before the expiration of the 30 day, the first 30 day period within which to file an answer. Let us say, for instance, you receive the summons from the court requiring you to file answer on September 2. So you count 30 days. Before the expiration of the 30 day period, and you want that period to be extended by another 30 days, you should file your motion before the expiration of the 30 day period. That would be October, you count, starting September 2. September 2 is day 1, then up to the 30th day. You should file your motion for extension before the deadline, which is the 30th day from receipt of the summons on September 1. That would be October 1. Right? So you should file your motion for extension before October 1. If you will file your motion for extension after the 30 day period has expired, you will not be allowed anymore. Why? What period are you trying to extend when it already expired without you asking for extension? There is nothing more to extend because your original period of 30 days expired without you asking for extension. So the motion for extension, therefore, should be filed before the expiration of the original 30 day period. Okay? Now, what is the effect if you fail to file your answer? You can be declared in default. So for failure to file answer, despite notice, the defendant is thereby declared in default. The plaintiff is now allowed to present his evidence ex parte. That would be the effect. Now, notwithstanding, you should address your questions to me, huh? not to your classmate, because your classmate does not know. <laughs> you listen. Uh, I already warned you, I don't like destruction. Huh? Otherwise, I'm going to send you out to the classroom. Not talk. Nancy, she read the talk. Same. So you listen. This is for your own good. You would like to listen? Get up. No problem with me if you will get out. Better still, we drop the subject. So I hope I'm making myself clear. Remember, I 
I'm trying to explain what you do not know. You don't do all this. 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 All right, let's proceed. While you may have been declared in the court, and therefore you are not allowed to participate in the proceeding, still and all, you are entitled to notice. Let us say, for instance, that today the court declared you in the court for failure to file your answer. Failure to plead. Failure to file answer within the reglamentary period. The court, upon motion by the plaintiff, may declare you in default. As a consequence of your having been declared in default, you cannot anymore participate in the proceedings. Even if you have a counsel, even if you have a lawyer, your lawyer cannot talk. He cannot participate in the proceedings. Although, you are entitled to notice that the reception of the evidence <coughs> of the plaintiff is scheduled or you will be notified of the day of the hearing. But, even if you are there, with your lawyer in coat and tie, your lawyer will not be allowed to participate. Why? Because you have been declared in the court. You have no more legal standing in court. So, what is your remedy? What is your remedy if you are, as a defendant, declared in the court? Your remedy is to file a motion to leave order of the court. So you should ask the court for elder to leave order of the court. Or, another way of putting it is motion to set aside order of the court. Of course, you should state the reason or reasons why you fail to file your answer within the regulatory period of 30 days. Normally, Courts are very liberal. Courts do not favor technicalities. So if the court finds that your failure to file answer was due to justifiable reasons, the order of default will be set aside. Another way of putting it is the order of the court will be lifted. And your answer, your belated answer, will be admitted. By the way, if you file a motion to leave order of the court, you should already attach your proposed answer to your motion to leave order of the court. Normally, courts are very liberal. They do not adhere to technicalities because court proceedings are not, they are not games of technicalities. You should lay your cards on the table. You should win on the merits. But if you are a recalcitrant defendant, you do not mind even if you have been declared in the court. It was only when you receive the decision that you try to ask the court for the lifting of the order of the court, the courts will not consider your case anymore. 
because you have been sleeping on your rights. The law will protect those who will assert their right. The law will leave you if you sleep on your rights. If you have a right, demand wait. You do not have a right, or even if you have a right, but you do not demand it, there's panahok sa video. Courts are not there to ask you, Pangajo and motion for the meeting of the order of the law, kay ako irreposit. No! Courts will not do that. You have to ask the court. All right. Now then, if the defendants here are declared to report for their failure to file answer within a period of 30 days from receipt of the summons, the court may render judgment based on the pleadings filed by the plaintiff. But the court cannot award more than what is alleged in the complaint. Not yet. So if the plaintiff demanded 100,000 as damages, the court cannot grant him 1 million simply because the defendant did not file answer. Tamado ng ihante, 100,000 na tagaan mo ng 1 million. Where is common sense there? The courts are not allowed to grant more than what is asked for. Now then, you cannot declare a defendant in default in all cases because there are cases where the defendant, even if he does not file an answer, cannot be declared in default. What are those cases? Legal separation, one. Annulment of marriage, two. Three, declaration of nullity of marriage. In those three cases or instances, the defendant, even if he fails to file an answer, cannot be declared in default. Therefore, not or the defendant not having been declared in default, or despite failure to file answer. The court is mandated to hear the evidence of the plaintiff in legal separation, in annulment of marriage, and in declaration of nullity of marriage. The plaintiff must prove each and every allegation constituting a ground for legal separation, for annulment of marriage, and or for declaration of nullity of marriage. Is that clear? Why is that so? Because we have not taken up person, family record. Ah, no, because you are still first year. Although before, persons of family relation was offered in the first year. Now it is already in the second <coughs> year. So, the grounds for, let us say, legal separation. The husband filed a complaint for legal separation because he caught his wife having sex with another man. So that's adultery. Adultery is a ground for the innocent party to file a petition for legal separation. The wife did not file an answer. <coughs> Notwithstanding the fact that the wife did not file an answer, the husband here must prove that his wife was really guilty of adultery. It is not, for, it is not enough for the husband to say he did, she did not file an answer. Therefore, she is deemed to have admitted the commission of adultery. No, sir. No, sir. Under the law, you, the plaintiff, the husband, must prove your allegation that your wife is guilty of adultery so that you will be entitled 
to a degree of legal separation. It is not enough to say, yaman mo, file an answer sa ato ba, ang dawa. Kaya, yaman mo, saba, saba. Silence means yes. That's the ordinary conclusion. But that is not so. In those three cases, you have to prove each and every ground for legal separation. So if you file a petition for annulment of marriage because your consent was obtained by means of fraud, you have to prove fraud. Like for instance, if it is the husband who filed a petition for annulment of marriage, and his ground is that at the time of his marriage to his wife, his wife was already pregnant by a man, not him. You have to prove that allegation. The husband cannot say, Yaman mo kung pag society's means? No! It is incumbent upon you, the plaintiff, to prove that there was fraud in getting your consent to the marriage. And one of the fraud referred to by the law is the bride is already pregnant by a man older than the husband. But the husband discovered it only. for declaration of nullity of marriage under Article 36 of the Family Code. You have to prove that your husband or your wife is psychologically incapacitated by means of evidence, even if the wife or the husband did not file an answer. Get that? The husband or the wife cannot be declared in the court. That's the file and answer. It cannot be declared in the court. But that's the only case. So, if you have separation, fair of collection of some of money, and you do not file and answer, you can be declared in the court. Because that is an ordinary civil case. In legal separation, nullity of marriage, annulment of marriage, the state is interested in the preservation of the marriage. Because marriage, or so on to the law, is a social inviolable institution. It is impressed and imbued with public interest. And the state is mandated, or so on to the constitution, to protect the sanctity of the marriage, it being the foundation of society. Okay, primero, man, woman. Nanadak becomes a group. The group becomes a group of people. This group of people become community. Group of community, communities become a barangay. A group of barangays become a municipality. A group of municipalities become communities. Then what? That's why the state the state is interested in the preservation of the marriage. So, the state does not allow the declaration of the defendant in the court for failure to file an answer. 
in those three cases. But other ordinary civil cases, you can be declared in the court for failure to find answer within the period of 30 days. Normally 30 days, huh? you will learn that later. When we study so much, there are my mga dependent na non-resident, let us say, foreign insurance company. They are allowed 60 days. So it depends there. That's why I said, ordinarily, you are allowed 30 days. We have a right to ask for its extension. The extension is 30 days also. Beyond that, no more. All right. Is there any question? At least up to the point. For example, the BNC in default. For example, the dependents BNC are declared in default because of the failure to file an answer and the uh, court render judgment uh, because of it. Uh, based on the allegations, um, can, is, is there any or are, are there any available remedies for the answer? Yes. After the defendant, if it if he failed to file an answer, and even if he was declared in the court, he can still appeal. He can appeal. He can go up to a higher court. If the judgment is not avoided, he can attack the judgment by filing a complaint for annulment of judgment. He has remedies. He has remedies. Pero, is a high. The higher court will not be in the court. Kaya mula mo ng korte at the first instance, you need not raise those defenses. Why are you coming at this time when you already lost at the start of the proceedings because of your inaction. And that is a matter that cannot be discounted. And normally, you should raise your defenses as early as possible. The earliest opportunity for you to raise your answer, I mean your, your uh, defenses, is to file answer. Why did you wait until judgment was ready? It's because probably you realized that Nah, there are no final answer. Hindi mm -hmm. mang gihapon. Hindi mang gandun ako. Kaya tinuot mo gandun na matang ko. That kind of attitude now. And then, when the judgment is there, Apo maka mukha to. Sa Afgano. Kuning tamami ako. What do you expect from your lawyer? The miracle? The lawyer from Basti is the Jesus Christ. That he can, he can perform miracles. All right, so let's go to amended and supplemental meeting. Now, what is the purpose of amending your complaint to correct the errors that you may have committed when you made the complaint or perhaps to clarify what you really want to say in your complaint. So, an amended pleading has for its purpose the correction of any error Defect or imperfection in the statement of the cause of action or defense. The amendment is not limited to the complaint. Your answer can also be amended. But of course, 
when and how the amendment is to be made will depend on the circumstances. Also, supplemental pleading. A supplemental pleading is an additional allegation. I will give you examples later in supplemental pleading. But per, per, first, let us go to amendments in general. Uh, pleadings 